Qatar is one of the most air polluted countries per capita in the world, ranking at 13 on a global scale. With the FIFA World Cup approaching, air pollution is one of the main concerns of the Qatar Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, an entity responsible for overseeing infrastructure and international sporting events. As part of Qatar's 2030 vision, the Supreme Committee has collaborated with Query, Qatar Environment and Energy Research Institute, and installed air monitoring stations in style stadiums and crowded spaces to study their air quality and improve it in the long term. This partnership with the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy started several years ago uh, during the construction of the stadium. And the Greater Doha area is, 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 is an area of, of extreme development, right? Over the past few years, uh, there's been a lot of construction and a lot of development in the urban area. And one of the things that we wanted to look at is an area like Tumama, which is also a residential area. Um, how is the air quality impacted by the construction, by you know, the, the landscaping and the presence of a structure like uh, a stadium, such as Tumama Stadium? Uh, how does that impact the local air quality within that area? And what does that mean uh, for us as a population? But of course, that also provides uh, the ability to monitor air quality before, during, and after games and understand the level of exposure for individuals who are attending the games. Air pollution in Qatar is particularly harmful to sensitive groups. This includes COVID-19 patients and people with respiratory diseases. The air pollution is worsened by construction work for the 2022 FIFA World Cup due to the emissions and debris created by it. Many sensitive people have to plan their routes in order to avoid areas with poor air quality, but this has become particularly difficult due to unforeseen construction sites appearing around Doha in preparations for the World Cup. Recently, because of the World Cup, I've noticed that the construction sites are actually uh, increasing in number and particularly around the metro areas, there are more construction sites. You never know if like, you know, if yesterday you were, uh, it's, it, there was nothing there, it was abandoned, tomorrow there might, you know, construction might have started. You never know when that would have happened. And that makes it quite unpredictable to choose where you were supposed to be walking because these sites just pop up. Suddenly there's debris everywhere, it's fresh debris, you know, stick in the air. So the World Cup has made it quite unpredictable because before I could chart my plan, where my routes, where I wanted to walk. But with the World Cup, you never know whether an area is safe anymore. The country is dedicated to hosting a carbon-neutral FIFA World Cup and using the opportunity to create a green legacy in the Gulf region by installing air monitoring stations all over Qatar. The first stations have been installed in the precinct of Qatar University and form a part of a project to improve air quality in line with the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 Sustainable Strategy. Monitoring stations will also be installed at the Al Janoub Stadium precinct in the near future. The Supreme Committee has calculated the World Cup's carbon footprint and educated local and regional stakeholders on the need to reduce emissions in order to host a carbon neutral event. The main ways to do this, of course, is to build a robust monitoring network, uh, which Kiri stations participate in. We all report our data to the ministry. The ministry has real-time visibility on, on measurements coming from all of the stations around the country, which is, I think, uh, upwards of, of, of 20 to 30 stations in the country. Uh, it's, a, it's a relatively high density of stations per capita. And having that data and continuing to build that data allows us to understand the spatial and temporal variability of air pollution and sets the scene for all kinds of intervention strategies. Preparations for the World Cup have already produced 3.6 million tons of carbon dioxide, but the government has taken measures to reduce further emissions by introducing 741 electric buses and hopes that all public transport will be electric by 2030. Even though these measures are taken, it is difficult to see how Qatar is going to improve its air quality in line with the Qatar 2030 vision. This is Padma Shafiq, Sashri Kirk, and Kisa Zahra reporting from Doha, Qatar.